Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and in this video, I want to show you how you can locate and update files that are stored in the data folder of the simulator, but also the preview provider. And as a bonus, I'll show you how you can move files stored in the documents directory and the application support directory for your application that you have created and are running on your iPhone, like the Core Data SQLite files, to your Xcode simulator locations. I love getting your feedback, so tap the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and leave a comment below. Make sure you subscribe to the video and ring that bell to get notifications of new videos. And if you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. I recently came across this post by Stephen Curtis, a well-known and respected iOS developer who publishes many free articles on Medium. This one in particular caught my eye. Even though I knew about the first part of this article on file location in the sandbox, I was pleased to learn something new, as I often do when I read his posts. I reached out to him to ask if I could use his content in a video, and he agreed, so here we go. There is no starter project for this short video, but I'd like to show you how I use the ability to locate where data is stored on all of the devices, simulators, and previews that I work with. I'll show you what Stephen shared in this article, along with a few other things that I've discovered as well. First of all, an iOS application sandbox is divided into the bundle container and the data container. The bundle container contains the application and resources that are needed for your application to run. And I often store mock data as JSON in the bundle, so that when my application loads, I can decode and populate my models when the app launches so that I have something to see in the simulator and in the preview. And you can just drag and drop files into this project navigator, and the path is accessible from the bundle.main path for the resource file name and provide its extension. The problem is that these files aren't writable. They are read-only. If you want to update and persist data between sessions, then you'll need to access your application's data container, wherever that may be. It could be in the preview, it could be in the simulator, or it could be on your device. An application's data folder structure looks like this. And this is the folder for the app that I have open. And this is the data folder for an iPhone 14 Plus simulator. You'll see the four directories in here, and it's the documents folder that I have used here to store the JSON data that persists the data between sessions. Here's the same simulator, but I'm looking at the data folder for another one of my applications. And the structure is the same, but I'm using the documents folder to store images for wine labels. In this application, the data persists using core data to SQLite. So where's that data stored? Well, it happens to be stored in the library application support directory. So if I have an application that can view SQLite files, I can view the contents here. Now, if I open the library of my bucket list app, there is no application support directory because there's no core data. But both have caches directory that could come in handy. And both have a temp directory at the top level that we could use if we wanted to persist data, at least for as long as your device will keep it around. The documents and the application support directories will keep data around for as long as you want. However, you can control that within your own application. The documents directory can be exposed to the end user, so it shows up in the files app on the phone. But if your underlying application relies on it there, you won't want that to happen. Perhaps this can be another video. So the question is then, how do I access these folders on a simulator? from the preview provider, or on your phone if the app is installed there. Let me first add a bucket list item to this preview on the canvas. If I switch from selectable and back to the live preview, you'll see that this item has persisted. Otherwise, the preview would have refreshed and not display an item. The question to be answered then shortly is where can I get access to this JSON that is stored? Let me run on the simulator. You can see that I have a number of items already persisted for my bucket list in this application running on the iPhone 14 Pro simulator. It doesn't match what's in the preview provider. My goal is to move the persisted JSON from this simulator 
over to my preview. In iOS 16, it became really easy to be able to access the location of folders within the data directory. There are a number of URL type properties now to make that so much easier for us. Many are not applicable to an iOS app, but if you recall the structure that we just looked at, we can access the application support directory, the caches directory, the documents directory, and the temporary directory simply by using the property on a URL type. For example then, in our file where the app launches, the one marked with app main, we can create an on appear block. Within that block, we can print the url.documents directory when the app launches. And then make it easier for us to use, I want to specify the path. And that will return a string and print it to the console that I'll be able to use. So let me run the app now. And when my simulator launches, I see the path printed to the console. What I like to do is to simply select that path and then right click and choose services and then open. Once the dialog appears, I choose run service and this opens up a finder window to that path. So here you can see that bucket list.json file. I can open it in text edit, for example, and take a look at the code and you'll see that the JSON for all of those bucket list items that are in that simulator. What I'd like to do is to move or copy this bucket list JSON file from the simulators documents directory over to the preview provider. And up until recently, the location of the documents directory or any of the data directories of the preview provider were not that easy to locate because the previews didn't support printing to the console. Well, this has changed now in Xcode 14.3, and I'm working on a beta copy right now, and there are still some issues, but I'm hopeful that by the time you view this video, the issues will have been resolved. What we can do now is print while in live previews, too. Let me just keep this finder window open. Now, I want to return to my list view where I'm showing the preview for this application. And in Xcode 14.3, the console will display print statements for previews. This means that when my preview appears, I can print the same location. So at the preview provider, I can add an on appear block where I present this bucket list view and print out that same path. I will, however, add the percent encoded option here and set it to false because the path to the preview passes through the simulator devices folder and by default percent encoding for the path is set to true and the space between simulator and devices will be replaced with a percent 20. So I'm going to set it to false so that it won't display that it'll just use a space. And with that then I can do exactly as I did before. I can copy this and then right click on the path and choose Open from the Surfaces menu to reveal the directory in the Finder. If I open this file, I see that it's that single bucket list item expressed as JSON. Well, what I could do now then, because I can see both of those directories or folders open, I can simply drag or copy that file from the simulator folder over to this folder, replacing it. Probably would have been better to do an option drag so that I'll leave the old one behind, but I've done it now. So back in Xcode, I can refresh the canvas by toggling between live and selected modes. And there you have it, our replaced list of bucket items with the one from the simulator. In this second example, let me bring up another application of mine called My Wine Cellar. I use this every day, even though this version is still in development but I do have real live data on my phone that I keep up to date. If I run this in the simulator here, though, you'll see that I have no data. So let me bring up my phone onto the screen here in a quick time display and launch the app. You can see I have lots of data as I'm a big wine drinker. And that data is all stored in a SQLite database using Core Data Wrapper. The wine labels associated with each one of those bottles are stored as images in the documents directory. So I want to move both 
of those items from my phone to the simulator so that I can work with real data during more development. And this is something that I learned from Stephen's article. If you go to Devices and Simulators in Xcode with your phone attached to the computer, you'll see all the applications that you've developed showing up in the Installed Apps selection. So I'm going to select the My Wine Cellar app, and then I can choose from the Ellipse menu down here to download the container. So I'm going to do that, and I'll save it to the desktop. Well, let me bring that into view now. Well, I can right-click and choose Show Package Contents. And this will open up the contents, and I can get access to my app data. Does this look familiar? The Documents folder has all of my Wine Label images. And the Library Application Support folder contains my SQLite files. All I have to do now is to locate those two folders in the simulator and move the contents over. So at the app entry point of my app, I'm going to create another on appear block and then print out those two directories. I'll print out a string first so that I know which one is which. So first for the documents directory, we'll print the url.documentsdirectory.path. And then for the application support directory, I'll print out its type and again apply the path. So let me run the application in the simulator. I see both paths printed out, but I have a problem with the second one, especially if I'm going to use the services open menu to get access to this path. The path is percent encoded, and I don't want that. If we return to our on appear function now, let me backspace on the path. If I start again, I see a grayed out option for percent encoded. If I hold the option key down on the keyboard, it becomes active so that when I select it, I can now enter false because the default is true. I don't want it to be percent encoded. And then if I run again, I'll see both our paths that we have that I can now use. So let me open the Documents directory first by selecting and accessing the Services Open option. I see that there are no labels here, so I'm going to copy them from my Apps Package Contents, and I can paste them in here. Well, let me do the same for the Application Support directory. I'll select that and use the services menu to open it. And I do see three SQLite related files here, but their content currently has no populated data. So I'm gonna to go to that same location from my package contents, from my app, and copy from there. And then I can return to the simulator location then and delete those existing ones, and then just paste in the ones from that package contents. Let me run once more in the simulator then. And that's fantastic. I now have duplicated the data that's on my live iPhone in this simulator so that I can continue to develop with real data. Well, I hope you've learned something from this video and will be able to use it in your own projects now and in the future when you need to access those persistent files. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment. Be sure to subscribe to my channel to get notified of new videos. Thanks for watching, and thanks to Stephen for the insight.